Hello YouTube and hello Ninth Age community. This is Charles with Everstead Gaming and I've got another Ninth Age battle report. How sweet was Labor Day weekend? For me, it was sweet enough to get two games in. Uh, actually, three games in. I only got two battle reports because one was really fast and really weird. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah. Didn't get enough pictures for one game to be a battle report. To, I got a game in on Friday against some lizards. So, uh, Gonna make that battle port right now and show you guys how that game went. So we've got a Gatol Lord with uh, Alchemy, Grass and Mortal that gives him plus one to channel, plus one to cast. Pyromancy and Symbiosis so lets him cast more than just uh, magic missiles through the, uh, basically only through the ancient or the ancient st or the Stegonaut with the engine of the gods. He's the Army General and he's the Battle Serum Bearer, so he's worth a lot of points with a Binding Scroll and Essence of the Free Mind. Uh, which is why he's also got Pyromancy up there. He took Alchemy in this game, though. And then he's also got a Soaring Warlord on an Alpha Carno. Paired weapons, Egg of Quetzal, Starfall Shard, and Touch Greatness. So that guy's hard to kill with the hard target and the two up against Flaming. And then in his core, so he's got 28 Soarus Warriors, Soaring Warriors, with the Serpent Totem, so that means they're plus one agility. They get Fight X ranks, so they're really good counter to my Knights. Um, which I'll talk about later. He's got spears, full command, a little bit of scoring skink bows, that's where his Katol Lord hangs out. And then he's got two things of five chameleons, two things of two spearbacks, and two taurosaurs. One with a giant bow, and one with the engine of the ancients. Engine of the gods. Yeah, I totally got that wrong. Engine of the ancients, everybody. It's the engine of the ancients. Well, I think it's a good list. Not a lot of scoring, but uh, some heavy hitters for sure. So I'm still kind of playing around with the double volley gun list, so I still have two artificers with long rifles. This time, however, I have a knight commander who is on a horse. He's my general. He's got a shield, the light of the sunstall, and the witchfire guard, which is a four Aegis against magical attacks. Then I have a marshal also on a horse. He's my BSB. He's got a halberd, the black steel, a lucky the charm, and then the stalker standard because I don't like taking DT tests with my knights. And then, finishing out my characters, I have a Wizard Master with Alchemy. He's on the Arcane Engine with the Arcane Shield for distracting, and then the Strength, uh, uh, Perception of Strength, Bound Spell. And then he's just got Magical Arum, and the Talisman of Shielding. Yeah. And then, in my core, I have uh, nine Knightly Orders with Lances, Musician Shield, and a Standard Bearer. Didn't have enough points for a Magical Standard. And then I have 20 Light Infantry with uh, uh, handguns, not crossbows. And they have a Champion with a Long Rifle, and the Marksman Pendant on a Standard Bearer, and a Musician. I love having four Long Rifle Shards in there. I mean, it's really spicy, because I also have another 20 Light Infantry. These guys do have crossbows, and they have a Champion with a Long Rifle as well. And so they don't have a Musician. That's interesting. Huh, maybe I didn't have the points for it. And then uh, in uh, my special, I have two units of four Knights of Sun Griffin. They have Lances, they have Musicians, they have Standard Bearers, and both units had the Banner of Discipline. Because um, as you saw in my last battle reports, just they had trouble fleeing, so just trying to stop that from ever happening again. Uh, one little thing of five Rangers, one thing of five Riders with Pistols, Brace of Pistols, and then rounding out the list is two volley guns, and it comes to four, 4,499 points on the dots. Not quite perfect at 5,000, but pretty good. So this is the official map pack that we use. We used map number four. The objective was breakthrough, and deployment was refused flank. And yes, um, big pieces of train that hill in the back was really uh, crucial. That forest helped my opponent out a lot. That rune was a little bit annoying, but uh, all in all, not too bad. So, this is the way my opponent deployed. Very tight, as you can see. Uh, this is after Scouts. Um, he put his chameleons down in front of his forces. I didn't really give him any other places to deploy. They couldn't deploy in the forest either. Um, so, he's got his two spearbacks on the flanks, uh, his big unit of Saurus in the middle. Uh, and then his uh, Katol Lord is in that little unit of Skinks with bows. And then his two Taurosaurs are out front with the engine being, I believe, the red one. Um, you can kind of see one has a red head, one has a white head. I believe the one with the red head 
has the Engine Ancients on the back, and his uh, Alpha Carno is on the right of the picture too. It's uh, it's the old Krokar model. Uh, so <laughs> he's not really that big on that metal. It's kind of funny because he was. I'm pretty sure he was meant for that 50 base instead of a chariot base. And this is how I deployed. So starting on my right, I've got a unit of Knights of Sun Griffin, and then 20 Light of Truth crossbows, and then in front of that impassable train with the big dice on it is one of my volley guns. I believe it's, uh, it looks like an Imperial Rocketeers model, but it's a volley gun. And then I have four Knights of Sun Griffin in the, in the middle, basically, of my deployment, and they're three wide with one knight in the back. I have another volley gun partially, uh, you know, being in the field to get some cover against some shooting. And then I have my 20 light infantry also in the field to get some cover against the shooting in case you really want to be aggressive with the shooting. I have my wizard behind my light infantry with the handguns in the back, uh, kind of protecting my deployment zone against the scouts. And my knights with my BSB and my general are next to the light infantry. And then I have my rangers and my riders on my right flank left in that picture. I vanguard my riders behind this hill, um, just don't want them to be shot at turn one. I believe my opponent plopped pretty much everything uh, to go for turn one, and he has turn one, so he moves up um, his uh, one of his chameleons to shoot my uh, rangers, and I don't get a picture of it later, but he actually ends up just killing them all. Like, he rolls like five poisons, it was ridiculous, but it happens. And uh, otherwise, he moves up mostly, let's see, pretty conservatively. Um, he just kind of switches the Alvacarno. Instead of being on the right, he moves it towards the left because that's where all my Knights of the Sun Griffin are and that model wants to kill those models. In the Magic Phase, I believe he gets a Quicksilver Lash off and kills uh, one of the Knights of Sun Griffin. They pass their Panic Test. Thank you, Banner Discipline. Uh, I think I passed it the first time, though. I, I don't even think I failed one of the first ones. Um, and then, yeah, uh, the shooting's... Uh, not very impactful. I think they do a little bit of wounds to the unit of Knights of Sun Griffin that charges um, those spearbacks right there. Uh, I first charged the uh, chameleons who fled. Uh, they didn't cause any other panic tests. And then uh, I was able to redirect into the spearbacks. Uh, that was a good charge. I want to say it was like six inches away. So a little bit tough, but um, a great charge to make turn one. Can get rid of some of that shooting, get in his deployment zone, really start putting pressure on the objective. And then I have another Knight of the Sun Griffin moving up on my right. Um, yeah, this is the this is how the rest of the board looks, basically. Um, yeah, I don't really have that much more movement. Just to move my Knights up a little bit. Um, I move my Riders to shoot at his Spearbacks on the right there, hoping to cause a Panic Test. And then I move my Wizard up to get in range to cast some spells, uh, which I try a Quicksilver Lash at the uh, Engine of the Ancients uh, Torosaur. Um, I only do one wound, and then I'm able to get Altered Sight off on my Light Infantry, which is great. Um, they're going to target the chameleon, one of the Chameleon units this turn, which they do, and they kill them all, which is great. Um, now I can't get chaffed over here. Um, it's kind of a, it's a little bit of a waste. You know, it's like 20 shots, but um, I don't think anything else was in range, and I didn't want to shoot them. I wasn't... I didn't feel like I needed to shoot them at the uh, Alpha Carno this turn. And then I shoot the Volley Gun, um, one of the Volley Guns at the Engine of the Ancient Torso as well. I'm only able to poke through one wound. Um, not the greatest roll, not the greatest amount of shots. And then over here, this actually goes really well. I kill one of the Spearbacks off, um, but I don't cause a panic, unfortunately. Um, that, you know, that Cold Blooded's really good. And then uh, my light infantry with crossbows shoots over here, and I think they kill like three or four off, which was great. Um, in combat, the Knights of Sun Griffin have really no trouble um, just pushing over those spearbacks, and um, I don't think they kill them, but I think they run them down. I think they killed one, and one had a couple wounds left. So we're in Ancient's turn two. Uh, this spearback uh, just turns to face my riders. He's gonna, he's gonna give them hell, basically. And I believe there were no charges, yes. Um, so he just uh, positions his Taurosaurus and positions his Spears. He moves his Katol Lord in the unit of Skinks with Bows to kind of peek right over that hill, just so they can st uh, start slinging some alchemy magic towards those Knights of Sun Griffin that are in his deployment zone. So at this point, you know, they, they gotta, he, gets, he gets to kill him. 
Uh, the Chameleons rallied. Yeah, and then Alpha Carno is really close to that one volley gun with the white base. He gets a 7-7 seven seven magic card. This is the only time I take a picture of this. It's an anomaly. Sometimes I just don't care about my opponent's magic face. Really, I care about the results from it. What, you know, what gets killed. And uh, he kills one of the Knights of Sun Griffin here, um, which actually makes it so that he can't see them. Uh, he can't, or I'm off the hill now with that one guy. Um, I don't think he gets any other spells off on this guy. And then in the shooting phase, um, this guy just kills the whole unit. Um, which is pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. So, that was unfortunate. It would have been nice to even just have one model alive to just kind of do some random stuff. And then at the start of Empire Sonstall, turn two. These guys, right here. 17 inch charge. Oh, that was really good. Uh, I wasn't too worried about failing it, I guess. Um, because I had that nice Sun Griffin that would probably would have been able to chaff. But uh, making a 17 inch charge is great because obviously if I win that, I can get in the flank of those uh, soaring warriors. And then over here, um, this was not even very far. I think this was like a 14 inch charge. Able to give myself plus one advance rate too, uh, with them being a parent unit and the orders, so uh, easily make it in there. And then this is what the uh, this is what it's looking like so far. And pretty much as you can see, you know, I've got the two Torosaurus tied up. The Sor the Soren Warriors could possibly get tied up if you know that combat goes well. It's really just that Alvacarno in the middle. <laughs> That guy needs to die, you know, that guy needs to bite it this turn. Because if, if, uh, if he doesn't, uh, he's obviously going to get into my backfield and cause a lot of trouble. I pull uh, Flux card 6, which gives me uh, 6 dice to start, and I channel to, uh, to get 2 more, basically. And I have 1 channel left over. I kind of, I kind of, I started doing these pictures, which I like doing these pictures. I think it's, I think it's a great way. Ever since I got those veil tokens for Bucket Bell, it's a great way to kind of really capture how I distribute my dice and save tokens. Uh, I believe I tried with Silver Spike at, so I, this is the two spells I tried, was Silver Spike at the Alpha Carno, and either I got it off and I didn't wound, and or he saved it, but nothing happened. And then I tried Glory Gold just on my knights, just to make sure I killed that, uh, that Taurosaur, and I f pass that, but he dispels it or something. So, in the magic phase, I, I don't really get any results. And then this is at the end of the shooting phase, and again, I have zero results, unfortunately. So, bad bad shooting phase, bad magic phase. Good combat phase, however. Um, the Knights beat the Taurosaur. I lose, um, I think I lose, like a, I think I took a little bit of DTs, because these guys charge out of a rune. I think I took DT, two DTs there, and the Taurosaur did another wound. So, I lost the Knight. But um, I'm in the flank there, which is awesome. So that'll be a good round of combat there. And then over here, uh, a big whiff fest. I believe my dude with the Sonstall does a wound. The BSB does a wound. And then the Knights do only one wound. And uh, yeah, a little bit of whiff fest everywhere. Um, this guy does end up fleeing, uh, but he gets away. So um, yeah, all around not what I wanted. Yeah. But that's alright. Dice sometimes they do that to you. I was lucky. I feel like I was feel like I was fortunate to beat the other Taurosaur, So, uh, Sword Ancients turn three. Uh, Alpha Carno is coming in. Comes into this volley gun, um, which I think has a couple wounds on it from like a spark creation earlier. And then this is what the battlefield was looking like. So, yeah, I got those Soaring Warriors tied up, um, and that's not the worst. That's actually not a terrible matchup for me. Because I do have a decent armor save, but um, yeah, he does have the alchemy magic. So if he can get some spells off, it's gonna make my life really difficult, especially because he has glory gold, and that's obviously gonna really make it hard for me. Um, it's just so hard to stop all these alchemy spells. I believe this was uh, just a molten copper. I'm basically stopping quicksilver lash most of this time because that one would just kill five knights, or at least with like Molten Copper, I have a chance to save some knights. Um, yeah. And then he does end up getting Glory Gold off in this combat, which is ugh, just really unfortunate. Um, and it's just really gonna hurt. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I think, I think this is either shooting, 
or another alchemy spell. I actually want to say this was another alchemy spell, but I, I'm down to just one row of knights, and I, I don't even have five knights, so I might keep picking my characters out now. And then in combat, I do some damage, um, but he's able to he's able to be steadfast and turn around. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, that's going to be really rough this turn, because um, even though I get to go first again with my agility four, um, that's just a lot of source attacks, and he's got real wound on me because he's got Glory Goloff and the flammable attribute. So, yeah, those guys, um, those knights, Sun Griffin could easily be all dead next round. So, and it's only turn three. That's the crazy thing. It's, there's already been a lot that's happened in this game. Um, this game was pretty fast paced in the beginning. It's going to slow down though. So yeah, he kills the Volagun on my last turn. He gets into the Light of Entry. You know, there's nothing you can stop that. Um, I'm just trying to move my wizard away from that combat now in case that unit breaks. I don't want him to get charged by the Alpha Carno. Um, he's just so slow in this list. I kind of realized I did not like the wizard on the Arcade Engine in this game. I just doesn't really bring anything. <laughs> um, I get the... Flux card one, which gives me five dice. I, s I just decided to save one thing of Veil Tokens, because I, I didn't really feel like I had that much I wanted to do. Um, and the only thing I do do in the magic phase is I throw a quick silver lash at this guy. Does a wound. That's okay. And there's a chance I could kill them, but um, I wasn't really, really worried about... I just wanted to try and get rid of that guy before the end of the game, because he's obviously worth points, and I want him to chaff me. Um, we did go into the Torso again, and this time, um, I believe my Sansal guy hits with all of his attacks, so he kills it just right away. And then, this kind of just, just another angled shot to show what it looks like. Um, we're all, you know, we're really close here. Um, but, uh, it's obviously his turn next, so he's gonna back up. And then, um, I go first here, and it looks like I do another, like, four, four wounds, which is not bad. Um, he attacks back, though, and he does six wounds to me. And, um, I think I had to, I think I had, like, a test on a six, and I passed it. Um, yeah, it was, uh, not good. I do another wound with a stomp, too. But, gosh, yeah, uh, he, I mean, he was hitting with all his attacks, too. Like, no re-rolls to him, he just, you know, like, out of, like, 14 or, like, something like that. So, 20 attacks, it's like, he hits with, like, 14 of them. It's crazy. And then, uh, second champ... Passed my break test amazingly on a six. And then we're going to Sword Ancients turn four. So he chaffs with his bow unit so that his control lord can try and work on my Knight of Sun Griffin, who's just chilling in his deployment zone still. Um, yeah, he's got three wounds left. I, I moved him back because I thought I maybe could get him away from the control lord, but Alchemy's just got such far ranges that I really should have just put pressure on the backfield. Instead, like... On my previous turn, that guy maybe could have charged something. Instead, you know, he was he was too far away to do anything. I think I tried to put him into the source combat last turn. Um, just to add a couple more attacks and like a charge, but um, he failed that charge. Um, he does a silver spear, does two wounds, so he's still alive. He gets glory to go off again, which is rough because now that guy's really going to die. Um... And then I believe he throws a spark of creation in this guy, and he does two wounds. He only does he, he can only do the strike five with the way he distributed his dice. He does two wounds, and I make both four up armor saves against the strength five. So that guy's alive still, which is really good. Um, I sack the artificer, and then again I pass a leadership a discipline six break test. So that was pretty, pretty, uh, pretty sick, as they say. Um, and this is um, picture of. Uh, what I do on my turn four, I charge the chaff with my knights, and then um, I move. I move that knight sunker back again. I, I feel like that was a bad move again. I feel like I should just move him around to really try and trap the Katol Lord. Um, but that's what I was. I was thinking I want to conserve points, try and get the objective. But yeah, this is what I do in the magic phase to convert dice. I get a nine dice phase. Um, however, I feel like alchemy just is like not really that great at this point. I'm able to do a quick silver lash, kill this guy. He just lets that go. Um, I throw two dice, I get it off. That's a go. I kill that guy. That's great. Um, and then I do a silver spike at the warriors, who finished off my Knights of Sun Griffin the last round. And I think I do three wounds here. And then the shooting phase, I'm able to blow them away with my crossbows. 
And this was really exciting because then um, my volley gun was able to shoot at the Katol Lord, but I don't do anything. So, yeah, that guy's alive still. <sighs> Just being a really big pain for me. Um, and then I'm not really sure what happened here. I believe what I came in here is I came in and did like nine wounds, and I want to say they fled, and I let them flee. And then on his turn five, he charges Alpha Carno into the volley gun. And this turn, you know, he obviously I auto broke from combat because he just had all his attacks on the unit. So he's able to make like a 16 inch charge over here. I really would have loved to see him fail that, but um, no, you can't get everything. Yeah, so I believe what happens is I decided to not pursue because I wanted to try and get the Katol Lord. Um, you know, try and have a charge against him, but he just, my opponent moved very well. He just puts the Katol Lord behind the unit of Skinks who rallied. Um, you know, they weren't below 25%, so I don't know. I almost feel like I should have pursued them, but I don't know. I, I guess I, I still would have been facing the Katol Lord. Yeah. But then he might have not been able to go in that back corner. I don't know. It's obviously hindsight. He does a spark of creation on my knights. And I believe he kills one knight. And puts a wound on my BSB. And then in combat. He kills a volley gun. Causes a panic test. Um, they flee f far enough away. And then the Alpha Carno does not, is not able to pursue them. So it's almost a better result than them staying there. Because now I actually have a chance to rally instead of just getting into combat. And then uh, my turn five, they do rally, which is great. Um, I don't think I flipped them around, which is weird. But they do rally. Um, I'm able to get a quick silver lash off on the Katol Lord. I do two wounds there. And then this is what the battlefield's looking like. So I've got, <laughs> still got one guy. In his deployment zone. I believe my knights are technically probably in his deployment zone. They go into the chaff. I needed 11 on the overrun to get into the Katol Lord. And I end up going for it. Because I kill all the skinks. And we missed it by one inch. I, sh I, don't know, I don't know why I took this picture at this angle. Because it looks like I almost got in there. But I should have showed like the one inch gap between the models. Ugh. If only. Which at this point I'm also like kicking myself too. Because I'm like... I think I was just thinking impetuously, and I'm like, it's turn five, like, I should have just reformed, you know, made it so that I could look at the Katol Lord so that he couldn't get in my flank right here, and I didn't do that, and, ugh, yeah. So he moves his Alpha Carno, this is his turn six, he moves his Alpha Carno so that he can look at my Knight of the Sun Griffin, because he still has Egg Quetzal, he just ignores my Light Infantry, because they can't get into uh, the deployment zone. And then in the shooting phase, in the magic phase and the shooting phase, he just he just gets all the results he needs. So against my knights, he puts a wound on my knight commander. My BSP is alive still. Um, this is like between molten copper and a couple other things. He kills the rest of my knights off, and then he also with Egaquetzal, he does like he only gets like three hits, and he does like one wound, and I can't pass the armor save. Or he, may, he maybe did two wounds, and I I couldn't make up two three ups. And I lose my Knight Sun Griffin, and then in my magic phase, and then basically in my final turn, I have nothing to do. Um, I can't charge anything, I can't really shoot anything, because even if I turn, you know, I'm hitting on 8s against the Chameleons. All I do is throw a Quicksilver Lash at the Katol Lord, um, but I, and I get it, and I miscast, but I believe he casts his, his, his uh, I believe he um, makes his save, so and that's the end of the game. It was a 10-10 draw. 46-point <laughs> difference. No scoring units were left. I really felt like it was my game to win for a while. And then it just became my game to lose. But I, I'm happy not to lose it and get a draw. But, wow, yeah. Oh, man. It was just like... Because I, I had the objective for so many turns. So many turns. I was in his backfield. And I think I just misplayed all those. I think that, nice, that little Knight of the Sun Griffin, he should have been... Like, uh, he should have been moving around to look at the Katol Lord every round, so that, like, you know, he had to keep moving forward, because he, like, I basically gave him the space to move in that back corner, 
And that was such a good place for him. Where if I had made it a little bit different, I really could have, like, could have denied him that. But I, it's all hindsight. I, sometimes, yeah. Like, I regret, like, not overrunning into those skinks because then they were able to chaff me another round. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. I have nothing else to say. I misplayed that backfield. And I got a 10 10 draw. But I like this list a lot. I think it's a solid list. I love the double I love the double volley guns. Um, I actually liked the knights. Um, obviously like an Alchemy Control Lord's so brutal because he's got so many spells. He's got basically four spells of slinging you spark, molten copper, uh, quicksilver lash, and um, and silver spike. And it, all of them are so deadly to knights. Um and he's just a really strong matchup in this case, but regardless of that, I think the uh, I think the list is pretty solid. I wish I had I wish I had a couple more knights in that block so that because nine's just so small. Um, but then I'm I'm kind of just a little bit above my min core, and I don't want to go that much higher. So I think that's I don't know maybe I just drop those rangers. I don't know, those guys are kind of useless. Yeah, I might as well just drop those guys and get two more knights. That'd probably be the answer. Yeah. All right, well, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, this has been Evershade Gaming. Hope you enjoyed this battle report, and have a good one.